Hello, it's Scott Manley here with uh, something slightly different than usual. You see, Kerbal Space Program 0.235 has been out for about three weeks, and finally, I think all the mods that I use in Interstellar Quest are working on it. So I thought I would take this occasion to answer the question that I get asked a lot. What mods do I use in Interstellar Quest, and how do you set them all up to work? Because it is not a trivial process. So, first of all, how do you find out what mods I use? Well, you could ask me on YouTube, or you could go to Google and say, what mods does Scott Manley use? Look at this, some guy to boost, tech it, hex it, I don't know, I don't know who they are, Yogscast, who's they? Uh, what mods does Scott Manley use? And I come to this wonderful page on Reddit. The internet has actually compiled a list of all the mods you need to get. They'll also give you links, and I, of course, comment on this thread and make sure that things are kept up to date, so that if you get everything here, then you should be able to uh, make the game work with 0.23. Now, most of these links will also have the version for 0.235. Now, the only thing I'm not going to get this time, and if I'm just going to look around, I went and grabbed all the mods in advance so you didn't have to sit and watch me download it. Now, what I'm not getting anymore are the texture reduction packs because active texture management these days is doing a pretty spiffy job of, of doing this in a very easy manner. So you don't need those anymore. Everything else is pretty much as it's listed. Some of these are still from last year, like the Enhanced Nav Ball really hasn't been updated because it still works. B9 is from last October, but there are unofficial patches, and you have to make sure you get the unofficial patches for uh, Remote Tech, for B9, and uh, for Kerbal Engineer. So you're going to apply these against 0.235. Now, if you have the game on Steam, what I like to do, or I'll have the game on Steam, and this is what I like to do. I like to go to my Steam folder and I like to make a copy of it. So if I right click on it in the library section, go to properties, and then click on this local files tab, browse local files, it takes you to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Kerbal Space Program, which is the directory where all things Kerbal are installed. So what I want to do is make a copy of this, and this is my E drive, which is a, a, a solid state disk. So I'm create a new folder here. I'm going to be KSP235. Sweet. So open that up, and all I'm going to do is select all this using a shift click, and I'm going to copy it, because I don't want to nuke everything in the Steam directory. That's kind of my pristine source. I don't tend to apply mods directly against my Steam directory, because what will happen is Steam will update and suddenly I find that I've got a non-working install because some mods that are installed in there perhaps are no longer compatible with the game. So all the modded versions go in a separate tree. Now you can look there, you saw that I had many versions of the game installed there. This is copying from a spinning disk drive which makes it a little slower. Okay. So now, pretty much, from this point on, I don't need this anymore. What I do need to do is copy all these, install all these files in order, right? They're all zip files, and it's basically your standard uh, install process. So you can, you can either drag the game data folder in here directly, and it will merge. Now, on Windows, it will do a merge. On Mac, you will have to hold Alt when you're doing that, and then that should, depending upon a number of criteria, it will generate a merge. Deadly re-entry. Well, deadly re-entry doesn't come in a game data folder, so you just drag that in there, and it will copy it up, and you, you'll be able to see that, look, we now have deadly re-entry in module manager. We'll look at that later. Environmental visual enhancements. That That's the one that makes the nice clouds. There is actually an optional patch for that, which I will probably download. That includes dust storms on Duna. And I'm going to merge the game directories. You will get a lot of these warning. Keythane, I'm not really using because really I felt it was better to use the built-in resource gathering from Interstellar. Still, Keythane has a nice sensors on it. Uh, there's in installation instructions in some of these that say, watch out to make sure you have, uh, you know, you don't have the latest versions or you don't have old versions. 
game data, uh, sorry, this one is the warp plugin, the interstellar mod, which is kind of core to the whole series. Real shoot gives you some really good uh, shoots and everything. Now, this one, okay, so this one actually has some extra installation structures you might have to be careful about. This is extra real shoot module manager stuff that adjusts the shoot, uh, shoots included with the squad, for example, the stock real shoot con reconfiguration. I think that may be causing some problems right now, so I'm going to leave that to the side. Uh, might apply it later. Enhanced nav ball just goes straight in. Uh, B9 aerospace. Now this one also includes ships as well, which is nice, and it includes a reduced textures directory, which you probably don't need to worry yourself about at all. So yes, merge this whole thing. Do this for all current items, merge those. Remember, if you're doing this on a Mac, you have to be careful that you hold Alt or just be super careful. Okay, so Vanguard Parachute is interesting because it's two level downs before you actually get to the, the game data. And you need to do it properly or it won't work. Docking port uh, thing from Navy Fish. Oh yes, it says there's a collision between toolbar. Now, um, I'm just going to copy and replace. Let me just see. Uh, change. Oh, changes. I don't care about that. Copy and replace. What else are we colliding? We don't care. We don't care. These are all things. Ooh, wait a second. Source code. Uh, don't copy. I don't care about that. So you're going to have to make some. Okay, so toolbar.dll. Now, what am I copying this from? Don't copy. No file. Leave this one in here. So, you know, look at this. What it says is toolbar.dll is newer, right? It's from April 8th, whereas this toolbar.dll is from December. So, I think we want to uh, don't copy in that case, that we actually keep the newer tool uh, toolbar. KW release, uh, K oh yes, KW rocketry, and that has game data. Now, I've been seeing that the developers of certain mods have been putting things like donation buttons in their mods. It's uh, not something I'm particularly fond of, but I won't name names in the hope that they will see the light. Uh, this one is the Mark II com uh, cockpit. It says, read this is important, etc., etc. But pretty much you're just going to drop in... Oh, you're just going to drop in the game data directory again. And this one's going to try and replace module manager. That's okay, do that. We're going to fix up our module manager at the end. Tack fuel balancer, yes. That helps me uh, keep things flying around better and it helps me dump fuel and we're gonna yes we're going to merge there's a lot of confirmations going on VNG plugin again you got to get down to the game data to actually get to the uh, to make things work correctly what you're either looking for is either directly a game data directory but if there is none you just drag the relevant folder and then drop it inside game data uh, otherwise, you can end up with things in the wrong place. Now, in the old days, you used to put things into the parts directory directly, but that meant it was very hard to manage modules. Okay, so Ferrum Aerospace has a nice entry, and Module Manager, yes, we can, we can skip that, yes. And the Toolbar, yeah, no, no, copy, replace the file with the file you were copying. Oh, oh, uh, don't skip. Uh, oh, look, this is it. Oh, donate button skip. I don't want that. <laughs> skip, 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 and skip. Ah, do this for all cons constantly. Yes, yeah, okay. I think that should be fine. Kerbal attachment system game data. Oh, oh no, I did that again. I'm using 7-Zip, you'll notice, by the way, instead of uh, WinRAR, since my license for that has really expired. I was using it as a trial user and didn't really extend it correctly. Okay, so inside Kerbal Alarm Clock, you actually have the game data directory. So, again, make sure you're dropping the right thing in the right place. Otherwise, you can end up with a thing that's too far away. Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, another really useful thing to have around that makes your rockets bigger and stiffer. Okay. So that's most of our install gone so far.
Now you'll see that actually we've got many more directories than we had mods, and that's because some of these mods contained multiple directories. We also have three copies of Module Manager. You pretty much can delete the older two and just keep the newest one. You only need the newest one. Uh, toolbar as well, in theory, you only need the newest toolbar.dll. You want to make sure you get the newest one there. Okay, so now I have a few patches I want to apply first, and these I've all compiled. You have to go to the threads and dig these up. There's the B9 pack, which uh, adds a whole pile of changes. So there you see it adds exurgent engineering, fire spitter, all this stuff. All these uh, .cfg files, these are configuration child files that are taken by Mod Manager and then they're subsequently applied to the parts. Uh, I'm just going to drag these in here. We don't we don't need to keep those around. Uh, I do want to copy and replace in all these cases because this will be producing the best one, and I should probably stick that in there as well. Okay. Um, KER DLLs is for engineer, and you see engineer, engineer toolbar, bingo, drop those in. That is a newer version that has better calculations of the delta V. And I should close this. The mod 0 B9 fixes is another B9 fix for science configurations. What this does is it fixes your, uh, oh, oh, yeah, up. Actually, mod 0, B9, aerospace parts, utility, nose cone. Oh, there's the configurations there, huh? You can, uh, we're just going to drop this whole thing in here, really. But what this does is it makes the science on the B9 pack reusable. Because otherwise, you uh, end up being unable to remove the data from the experiments or rerun the experiments, and it can be very frustrating. Okay, last item is the remote tech patch which uh, is basically a DLL that is replaced. So you'll, you'll get this warning, copy and replace. Absolutely, we have a new DLL that stops the crashing. We're not quite finished yet, but we've, we're almost there. I think we're getting pretty close to things. So um, one thing we want to do to make things match up is under the warp plugin, there is... There's a few changes here and there. Oh yes, there's the science defs. That's one thing that we're missing here. Where did I get science defs? Oh, I haven't downloaded those. Okay, so so download the crowd-sourced science logs. Great, that doesn't work. Okay, so one thing I'd forgotten and I had to grab was the science defs, which is the extra science messages that are all so witty and wonderful. Those go in the squad directory under resources and you pretty much just want to obliterate the old one there. So remove that, replace it, and you will have far more fun messages. Okay, next thing we want to look at is the interstellar directory. Again, warp plugin. Now, there's a bunch of configurations here that mess things up. I believe uh, this might be the one. Seismic probe. So what this is saying is um, remove the ability to, or what you're doing is you're replacing the module science experiment with the FN seismic probe, right? So this not module science experiment will actually remove any module component on the sensor accelerometer and, and then it will subsequently add this seismic probe. I don't like that. I like it to work as a seismometer. So I delete those lines and save it again. And that means I should get a seismometer which correctly works. Okay. I think that's everything. We might actually be able to run this thing now. We have landing gear fix. We have all sorts of things. Uh, one last thing, of course, is my saves. Now... I guess I have all the saves that are on my Windows, or sorry, in under my Steam directory. Now if I go, and I can just come out here, go back to volume E, 23 is where my current saves are, and what you want to do is copy these. You do not want to just drag these because you will obliterate, you will, you will make one copy and lose them. Paste over the top, and of course merge everything where possible. Yes, we just want to overwrite. Copy and replace for the next 65 conflicts. This is in my warp save directory. And you can see that 
I've got quite a few backups of backups of backups. And these are several megabytes each. Okay, so now we should be able to run the game. And it will appear in the wrong place. So let me drag my window over this way. And you can see it's starting to load ever so slowly. Ever so slowly. Oh, my goodness. Ah, oh, finally, after about a minute, it got through that first step. Now, the texture reduction plugin will cause the game to take a really long time to go through that first step because it's basically tripping through all the files and looking for anything that looks like a texture that has to load and making sure that it's loaded into memory in a compressed fashion so that you will actually have more memory to work from. The texture compressor is probably the most important thing for keeping the game stable with all these mods because it reduces the memory requirements below the magic four gigabyte limit. It's actually more like three and a half because you know, there's all sorts of other overheads. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, start a quick game just so we can do a few things. I'm gonna start a new one and we're gonna make this um, new IQ, let's call it, new IQ. Let's pick a suitable flag. Oh, we don't have the NASA flags. That's perhaps... If, oh, there it is there. NASA. There. So we have the NASA flag. Start. Now, if you're going to use Interstellar Quest, you, it'll start up with this uh, tree loader change. Right, this is the important one. You want to have the Interstellar Quest. KSP Interstellar, that's one option. Not all of the other options will have all the nodes needed for interstellar mod to actually have everything running. So that's the one you want to load, and once you've loaded it, you can't really change it around, right? Oh, it says there's an update to the interstellar tech tree. Changes to the tech tree have been applied. Please restart base KSP before continuing. Sure, okay. Well, we don't need to worry about that right now, because we just started it. Um... I like to, if you, if you start up a new game, you'll also get the TAC life support. I like to adjust the maximum time without resources. I don't think it's, I think it's weird that you can last two hours without oxygen, but your electrical time is only, the time without electricity is the same amount. I like to bump up um, time without electricity to be more like um, six hours, right? So that's 21,600, I believe. Right? So that'll be uh, six hours that you can survive without electricity. Otherwise, you know, time without food and time without water is fine. I keep the resource consumption rates the same. And uh, yeah, disable respawn because it's not as if you don't have an infinite army of Kerbals to keep you alive or to supply your space program. Okay, um, there's some other stuff we can do. I'm just gonna... I guess, I guess I shall just go out into the landing pad with a... Very basic vehicle. Launch. Because what I want to do is set up my deadly re-entry settings, which are slightly different. Now, you can do this through a config file, but you can also do it through the UI, and it's easier for me to show you with the UI. And the UI only really loads, I guess, when you're in the game. Okay, so this is deadly re-entry configuration, deadly re-entry setup. And most of these I'm not going to change, right? What I did was I made it a little less hard. I, I knocked this down to about 22. So I knocked a little bit off. I gave it a little bit less awfulness. The G-tolerance multiplier, I knocked up to 30. Now, the G-tolerance multiplier is what happens to the parts of your spacecraft as they experience deceleration. Now, the crew will get killed by high G-forces, but... Also, parts in your spacecraft can break, but I don't like the way that behavior works because you can be having a spacecraft which is undergoing a huge amount of aerodynamic forces due to the deceleration. And with Ferrum Aerospace, the, most of the force is on the heat shield because it correctly calculates a lot of these things. In the default game, the deceleration, the drag is spread throughout the object, so having the G, having the G tolerance multiplier lower means that parts of your spacecraft will break as you uh, as you go through deceleration. I don't like that behavior. I prefer to have the structural uh, have structural failures on the craft due to differential uh, drag. That's what I like. I also like to knock up the G-force limits a bit because it's really not cool. Um, 
G-Force Max, G-Force Min, I don't know, was like 6, I think. Oh, not 65. You can knock this up. Oh, that's an interesting number. I've no idea. I've no idea how that gets calculated, but basically I made my crew a little stronger. You can save that and then Alt DR together. And yeah, that's more or less it. That is pretty much all the mods I have. No doubt I will be adding more in the near future because I do like to do these things. Uh, but yeah, that's the current state. That's me hopefully migrated to 0.235. I still need to do a lot of testing on my existing spacecraft to make sure they actually work. But uh, I won't be doing that online because <laughs> that is a terribly boring thing to uh, watch. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.